An entire planet becomes your laboratory in this large-scale simulation game. Players help foster new life and promote its evolution into life forms of higher intelligence. Guide civilization along the path of evolution until it can achieve exodus, the ultimate goal of settling on another planet. The basic challenge of the game is to maintain a comfortable environment for the life forms by adjusting atmosphere and geological parameters. Small organisms called prokaryote and trichorodont will grow and evolve into a multitude of life forms. Making a drastic change is a recipe for disaster. The key to success is to make small adjustments and see how the life forms react. Sim Earth also includes planets with environments different from Earth, such as Mars and Venus. Try your hand at terraforming these planets with harsh conditions into a world where life can thrive. This is Sim Earth The Living Planet, developed by Tomcat Systems, published by FCI, and uh, Maxis, I guess, just let them do what they were going to do. Uh, very little about Maxis involved with this uh, version of the game. It's quite a bit different from the um, Apple Commodore PC game. Uh, I think it's more similar to the Sega CD and Turbo Graphics versions, if I had to venture a guess. Because the only one I looked at was the Super Nintendo one. Uh, unlike games like SimCity and SimAnt and all of those others that we've looked at in the past, here we are much more hands-off from what little I can figure out. Because this game, I think you probably almost want to have the manual to play, because I could not figure out what the heck I was doing. Um, menus were all over the place, and yeah, I don't, I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but now that I know that we're, you know, responsible for, I mean, the very, the alpha version of Spore here, it does, uh, does make a little more sense. Um, yeah, we, uh, take control of a planet with varying atmosphere, temperature, and land masses. We place life forms on the planet and watch them evolve. There you go. The development stage can be restored and repeated until the planet dies 10 billion years after its creation, an estimated time when the sun will become a red giant and kill off all the life. Exciting. There are eight scenarios with three goals, including managing the evolution and the development of Earth stages, and four that involve terraforming Mars, Venus, an ice planet, and Dune. That's where they have that spice. I've heard so much about computer gaming world called Sim Earth absolutely fascinating. The reviewer wished it had more SimCity like visual feedback, but stated it was superior to the predecessor because of larger scope and greater replayability. It won the 1991 Software Publishers Association Excellence in Software Awards for Best Secondary Education Program and Best Simulation Program. Entertainment Weekly gave it an A- and wrote that while it's never too early to teach kids to respect the biosphere, the same may not be true of introducing them to complicated simulations such as Sim Earth, the Living Planet, for the SNES, which has more variables than a polynomial equation. There's something to be said for this, though. A task as simple as growing a daisy, one option offered here, requires far more than knowing which button to push to cream the bad guy. Um... I'm looking at the C also list here, and it mentions Spore, it mentions Evo, it mentions Sim Life and Creatures and all that other stuff. And, you know, I think if I had more time to dig into this and really kind of get my teeth into it, I probably would have understood it better. But as is, I cannot give you enough opinion one way or the other to say that if uh, it's good or not. So if this is the kind of thing that interests you, try it. If you've played it, let me know what you think.